I'm humbled by the request that I share some words of chizuk with the strongest group of people, the parents of our courageous young men and women who have chosen to serve on the front lines to defend our people. And with your permission, I'd like to share a little story that I found meaningful. So the story takes place in 1843 when the Tzemach Tzedek, Reb Menachem Endel of Lubavitch was invited to attend the rabbinical conference taking place in St. Petersburg, where he and a number of other rabbonim and others were tasked with answering questions about Jewish education posed by the Russian Ministry of Education. Now, at that time, it was during the Cantonist Decree, which the during which Jewish boys even as young as six or seven years old, were forcibly conscripted to the army um, with the goal of having them serve for 25 years and eventually completely forgetting and removing themselves from Yiddishkeit and converting to Christianity, God forbid. And the Tzemach Tzedek received permission to go visit a group of these Kantonisten, these Jewish soldiers in nearby Kronstadt. Now, the fact that he got that permission was nothing short of miraculous because the idea that a Rebbe is going to go visit Jewish soldiers who are conscripted in order to make them forget their faith is um, is miraculous. In any case, the Rebbe comes, the Tzemach Tzedek, and when he arrives in Kronstadt, the, one of the soldiers addresses him and says, Rebbe, we've been preparing all morning for your arrival. We've been working so hard to polish our buttons to look nice when you come. Now, Rebbe, it's your turn. Now it's your turn to work hard and polish our souls, our neshamas that have become so dull from years of detachment from the Jewish community. The Rebbe spoke to the soldiers. He encouraged them to stay strong in their faith and not give up on being a Yid. And then he said, you polished your buttons today with sand and water. I guess that's how you polished buttons in those times. He says the neshama, the soul, is also polished with sand and water. The neshama is polished with the letters, the holy letters of Tehillim that we say, with a generous dose of tears. The Tehillim with the tears, the words of Tehillim, the letters of Tehillim with the tears, that's the sand and water that polishes the neshama. One of the soldiers stands up and says, Rebbe, battles are won with joy, not with tears. The Rebbe says, you're right. Obviously, the Rebbe was very satisfied with this, and he says, that's how a soldier speaks. A soldier goes into battle with a joyous march, and not with tears, and it's by the power of his sheer simcha that he's victorious, even in the most dangerous situation, even the most challenging endeavors. I thought about this story because over the past four months, the Jewish people as a whole have expressed how we all feel as one and know that our actions and our behaviors and our mitzvahs and our tefillahs affect one another. And we've all cried a lot of tears and said a lot of Tehillim. But it's time that we really finish this with the March of Joy. And like the Rebbe replied to the soldier, you're right, that's how a soldier speaks. We have to add to all the sand and water and all the Tehillim and tears that we've said, we need to add a generous amount of Simcha, which will help our boys and girls be victorious, even in the most dangerous situations. I'm sure that all of you are B'Simcha, because what greater joy can there be than knowing that your child identifies with the idea of Jewish responsibility one for another. That being a Yid is not just a religious act, which is my own to observe, but it makes me part of a nation. And therefore I have responsibility for everyone else to the greatest degree. So with that simcha and with some Tehillim and tears, Let's hope that we end this very, very soon. Thank you for your great, great contribution to our people.